Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse 8, reading from the New Living Translation. When you have it, say amen. amen. The Word of God reads, before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so-called gods that do not even exist. Ooh, Lord have mercy. So now that you know God, or should I say now that God knows you, why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? You are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. Verse 11 says, I fear, Paul says, for you. Perhaps all my hard work with you was for nothing. Then he shifts and says, verse 12, Dear brothers and sisters, talking to the church, y'all, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom. Thank you, Holy Ghost. From these things, for I have become like you, Gentiles, free from those laws. You did not mistreat me when I first preached to you. Verse 13 says, Surely you remember that I was sick when I first brought the good news. But even though my condition tempted you to reject me, you did not despise me or turn me away. No, you took me in and cared for me as though I were an angel, this is Paul, from God, or even as Christ Jesus himself. Verse 15 says, what is that joyful and grateful spirit you felt then? Ooh. Uh, more people will shift on you. When you're doing stuff for them, they love you, they're joyful, but then when you... When you tell them I'm going to have to clip you for a season, now all of a sudden you got a problem with me. That's what Paul is saying. Where's all this love at now? Mm -hmm. He says, I am sure you would have taken your own eyes and given them to me. Paul was struggling, they say, with some, like probably an eye infection or eye, some, something was wrong with him. He said, but if, he had, if it had been possible, 16 says, have I now, Paul said, become your enemy because I am telling you the truth? This joy, this excitement, this love. Rah, 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 Paul. Now I'm telling you the truth and now I'm your enemy because I'm telling you the Truth, boy, do I know what that feel like right there. Mm, mm, mm. 17 says, those false teachers are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. Uh, be careful who you allow to get close to you. They are trying to shut you out from me so that you will pay attention only to them. People want to isolate you and get you away from truth. If I can get you away from the church, if I can talk bad about the leaders in the church, if I can make you, my God, begin to question the pastor, begin to assume stuff is going on that ain't going on. People begin to tell lies about stuff that ain't even true. If I can just see the enemy is cold-blooded when he's trying to destroy something that's effective. And it's amazing because we fall for it because we have no discernment, no power. We not we don't have we we're not really connected to God, so we can't even discern when the enemy has come in and tried to be twitched us. Mm, mm, mm. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right, Paul says, but let them do it all the time. Not just when I'm with you. Oh, my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again. And they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. Father God, I thank you for the few minutes to teach with accuracy, with substance, with revelation, with wisdom, with knowledge, and understanding. Help your people. Help us to be open to spiritual truth. Don't let us reject truth. Don't let us get angry at the messenger because the spirit of God is speaking truth. Father God, I pray, Father God, they see past everything and that they see that you are trying to ooh, protect them and help them move forward and that what you have called them to do called life. Let your kingdom fully manifest. Let your presence continue to set a monster, save somebody restore somebody help somebody father god that's religious uncover so that they can really recover in jesus name we pray come on and say amen, amen. go ahead and have a seat in the presence of the holy king uh, i feel good about this message here that god has dropped in my spirit my god i wrestle with it but god has released me 
I know we, if the Lord delay is coming, uh, the 4th of July, I believe, is next Thursday. We will be having service next Wednesday if the Lord delay is coming. We may just worship God, spend a little time in prayer, and then we may release. I may have someone give up and give testimonies about their freedom. I don't know how God going to do it, but he's going to do it. But I plan to be in the house of the Lord. If you're not out of town, you're a part of this family, you don't have a place that you need to be, come give God some glory for an hour and some change, and then go ahead and let God bless you the rest of your day. My God, but have you ever glanced over your shoulder and looked back at your past and thought, I wish I could go back to that point in my life? I bet that most of us at some point have come to the point in life when we wish we could go back. Y'all stay with me. I got the latest foundation now. Mm. We have come to the point that we wish we could go back. I've been there. Maybe now things in your life are so difficult, church, that you wish you could just turn around and go back to when things was, weren't so complicated and hard. Am I talking to anybody so far? You just wish I could just uh, go back to mama where I don't have to worry about paying no bills or nothing. Ask yourself, why is that? Why is that? Why is that? I personally think, my God, the underlying reason would be a desire for the familiar. One of the things that makes moving forward difficult is the unknown. Uh, well, things are unfamiliar. Familiar, fam being familiar is comfortable. Write that down. Also, being familiar is easy. It don't require anything if you've already done it. If you already stepped into something, my God, you don't have to begin to pray about it because you already know what it's all about. And see, for a lot of us, it's easy. For the people of God everywhere, it's easy to stay in the familiar. I go back to the familiar because we have already lived and experienced the familiar. It don't require no real faith to operate in the familiar. It don't require too much dying and sacrifice to function or operate in the familiar. It's easy. The late Dr. Miles always said, my God, it's easier to live in chaos than it is to live in freedom. Many people know how to exist in chaos and confusion and hell. And then you try to bring them out and give them freedom, they don't know how to handle it because they've been in so much chaos. So that's why I say it's easier, woman of God, to go back to familiar to chaos. Because you got to pay a price to get free, and then you got to pay a price to stay free. Yeah, yeah. Mm, go on somewhere, I promise you. Oh, my God, we may even get to the place where we think the past, listen to me, because God is talking, that the past is more promising than the future. If you're not growing in the dark, you're not reading your word, my God, you'll think the past has more promise, more benefit than your future. So if your past has been pain, as the woman of God talked about, rape, and all the type of stuff that we have been through in life, how can you convince yourself that that's more promising than this hurt? I'm going to take my time and teach. How can you tell yourself that all the pain and all the things that you experienced in your past, whatever your past is, you have convinced, and people of God all around the country, my God has convinced that this, whatever this is, stay with me, my God, is more beneficial than this. That's familiar. I don't know what this is. So we convince ourselves that this is more beneficial than this. How do you know? You ain't even experienced this. I promise you everything I came out of ain't no way in the world this could touch this. Oh, I'm standing in this, my God. I don't have, hey, my God, that can't touch this. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, because I'm talking to somebody in the spirit. Because many of you think this is better than that. Well, you don't even know what that is. That's a form of ignorance. To even convince yourself that it's more promising to remain in chaos than it is to trust God with my future. And many Christians all around the country do it. I'm talking to Christians because the Bible today in Galatians is dealing with the Christian church. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. 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 My God. Mm. Oh, my God. When moving forward, church gets hard, often our desire is to go back. I witness that all the time. Here's the thing, though. Going back is not moving forward. Uh-huh. And the Lord doesn't call us back to the familiar. Watch this. He calls us forward in faith. Write that down. God don't call you and I back to the familiar. He calls us forward. 
You got to be forward thinkers. You got to be next level thinkers. Oh, my God, you got to have next level faith for what God is taking you and for some of the things that God has created y'all to do. It's going to take forward faith, not backwards thinking. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Faith in him, trusting that he has our future in his hands. Oh, I'm living this testimony. And many of you that transitioned from 34, 34 to her, we live in this. We had to trust God with the next. We had to trust God with the unknown. We had to trust God with this level of campus, my God. We ain't got 3,000 people sitting in this church, but I trust God. And I promise you, every bill has been paid. Ain't nothing behind. Every time one short, we write the check and pay it. Because God is providing for the work that he called for. You got to trust God with your future. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When, 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 when our faith becomes familiar, it's past time, church, to take another step of faith. When our faith has come familiar, it's past time or it's time to take another step of faith. When you're, anything that you have already accomplished, it's time to accomplish something different. And after you accomplish that, Lawan, you got to accomplish something different. And after you accomplish that, you got to accomplish something different. So, my God, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. My God, the Bible says the only thing that pleases God is faith. The only thing that moves God is faith. My God, get up out there familiar and take a step of faith. Another word, take a leap of faith. My, my God, when your mind leap, your body got to leap with it. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, quit sabotaging your future with the familiar. Wasn't in my nose. That's the spirit. I'm going somewhere. Familiarity, church, is an enemy to faith. God can't develop. God can't expand you. All your faith because of familiarity. So you got to be able to move out of that which you know, that which you have already experienced, to experience something that you don't know, something that you can't control. Many of us, my God, truth be told, the reason why we don't have real strong faith and we ain't really passionate about our future because we got a controlling spirit, our root system. And we want to control, my God, if we even controlling God, what we will do, what we won't do, when we come to church, when we're going to submit, when we're going to do this and that. That's the controlling spirit. That's the root system. That's what's really causing many of us not to take the leap of faith. That's why it's so easy to go back to the familiar, my God, because we have done that, but we don't want to trust God with our future. Right. My God. Uh, and so because we know what? Because we got to trust God with our future, that means we give up control. Yeah. Yeah. That means my, now, now you got to trust, now you got to do a blind. Ooh, see, cause, see, 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 when you're dealing with the future, because God ain't revealed it, Ooh. now you got to. See, you'll never accomplish nothing in life until you learn how to do it blind. See, see you got to trust God when you can't trace God. See, many of you are trying to control everything. You want to see. Uh, but there are certain things, my God, that you get to different levels that God ain't going to reveal to you. He ain't going to show you. You got to go blind. You got to act like you're in a drunk, drunken stupor because you got to trust God. You got to grope and grope and all through the midnight hour. Some things God going to call you to do, you got to do it blind. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, familiarity can be beautiful. It can be seductive and a deadly idol of self-reliance. That's another reason why we don't trust, because we got too much self-reliance. We think we know better than God. God said the number on your hers, and I ain't got that many on my head, is counted for. If he know the numbers of the herd that's on your head, what makes you think you know better? See what I'm trying to say? So therefore, you got to let go of that self-reliance. Oh, Zechariah, scripture uh, 4 and 6 says it's not by your might nor by your power, but it's by his spirit, said the Lord. See what I'm trying to say? Quit trying to do it. You can't do it. Those situations that you are battling, that pain, my God, that keeps you coming to the church and coming to the altar and weeping and crying, men and women, that's because some of that is because we're still relying on self to fix it instead of God. Even though we're weeping, even though we're crying, uh, we haven't surrendered that to the Lord. See what I said? You got to let it go. Let it go. Even though you come, give it to him. Don't come and hold on to it. Come and surrender it. Remember, the altar represents sacrifice. Come and lay it down. Come and kill it. Come and give it up. See what I'm trying to say? Then when you walk back, you left it, and now you're gone. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Are y'all with me so far? This is good. This is good. This is good. Mm -hmm. And so, my God, self-reliance can be deadly. It can be an idol. Turning back leaves us powerless to move forward. 
Turning back leaves us powerless to move forward. This is where we find the Galatians. The Galatians are defecting from the true gospel by turning to old idolatrous, adulterous practices or their former way of life. Look at verse 8, 4 and 8. It says, formerly, Paul said, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those, uh, to those that by nature are not gods, little g. Paul is telling the Galatians, look, there was a time when you did not know God, when you were following the pattern of this world. We all been there, worshiping things that were not meant to be worshipped. We all been there. Paul is reminding them of the bondage to sin. When they worship false gods and practice empty rituals. This afternoon, I would like to talk to you about you come too far to go back. You come too far to go back. God has brought many of you too far for you to go back up under the law. He, he's brought you too far for you to go back and begin to worship things, my God, that you shouldn't be worshiping. I'm, can I tell you that God is a jealous God? He's not going to share his glory, his affection, his love with no other thing. No other human, no other car, no other clothes, no other dope, no other sex. He ain't sharing it with nothing. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, but you come, look at your neighbor and say, you come too far to go back. So put point number one on the screen. I feel like teaching. Oh, my God. Oh, to keep you from going back. Oh, I, I, this message I got to understand is your pastor didn't live it since April the 30th of 1995 when he saved me in that penitentiary. See, I'm qualified through Christ. Let me, let me balance this. I'm qualified through Christ to tell you that you come too far to go back. Uh, uh, and you ain't got to go back because I ain't never went back. So I'm not going to give you a pass to go back because I didn't go back. And my story is probably just as worse as your story. We all got a story. But so we can't justify, well, my God, it got too hard. Well, uh, like I told y'all, what I came out of, my God, uh, can't compare to what I got to go through on this side. So, for Luanya, I'd rather go through over here than go through that over there. I can't get nobody. Uh, see, uh, the Bible says the blessing is in remembrance. Uh, the blessing is in remembrance. Can you remember, uh, oh, my God, the pain, the suffering, and everything you went through that God brought you out of? Why would you want to go back to something like that that's caused you so much pain? Why would you want to treat a holy God that loves you? Why would you want to share your affection with God with idols? Yes, Why would you want to be turned back to Egypt? Egypt makes, represents captivity. Egypt represents the world in our day and time. Why would you want to go back to something that has hurt you? Something that has dropped you, Mephibosheth. You've been dropped. You've been violated. You've been stepped on. You've been left for dead. You've been counted out. Oh, my God, you've been mishandled. My God, why would you want to go back to something that's painful? God ain't done none of y'all like that. Why would you want to leave the true and living God and go back to something like that? And they're doing it every single day. Oh, my God, I tell you, it's too painful to go back. Oh, that's why my pastor keeps me on this side. I refuse to go back to that. It's too good. It's good on this side. Even in the midst of the pain, it's still good. So point number one, this will help you from, keep you from going back. Don't forget who you are. Oh, my God, when you start forgetting who you are, then you start entertaining who you was. <laughs> see, see, see. They got to stay with me, Barry. I'm going to miss them. <laughs> Wake up everything over there. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, cause, see, cause, see, when you forget who you are presently, you start going back to who you was. And, and you shouldn't really be able to go back to who you were because that person should have been dead. That's the first Adam. You should be functioning in the second Adam. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, the second Adam should be dead. I mean, the first Adam should be dead. Come on, you should be operating in the first, second Adam, which is Christ. Oh, my God. So don't forget who you are. Look at this. Looking, looking, look, let's look at what Paul had. Say, Hold on, I got to settle myself down because I feel, oh, my God, real good. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what Paul says next in the middle of verse number nine. Let me get my theologian on. He says, he says, why do you want to go back again? He asked a question, and I'm asking you that same question. Even though Paul is talking to the Galatian church, and I'm talking to you, God is to me. He's asking you and I this question. Why do you want to go back again and become a slave once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of the world? What does this have to offer you? What are you trying to go back to? What do you think going to be different this time? How is that going to help you? Amen, Minister Taronda, now. How is that going to help you now? See, see, I'm trying to get you to clip, my God, this way of thinking. Because God has brought you too far. And if you know who you are, you are kings. I'm always telling you that, men. And you are queens, my God. Why would a king and a queen, my God, oh, that God has given dominion to, want to go back and be a slave to stuff they're supposed to rule? Why would you want to be a slave to stuff that you're supposed to be ruling? God gave mankind dominion over the earth. So why is the earth ruling you instead of you ruling the earth? 
I know I've been there, but now it's been reversed. When you get God, stuff supposed to reverse, baby. My God, that was on top of you. Got to get up under you, my God, when you rule your life right. So why do we want to go back to the stuff that you have dominion over? Because you didn't forget who you are. Are y'all with me so far? What happened, Paul says, my God? Were well, the Galatian Christians reverting back to paganism? I'm finna mess your mind up. No. It was actually something a little worse. Religious idolatry. This is context. This is scripture. They went back to religious idolatry. They didn't go back to the club. They didn't even go back to smoking weed. They didn't go back to sleeping with men and women. They went back to worshiping idols up under the law. That God said salvation is in no other name but through Christ. Uh-oh. See, the altar should be full. Because all of us got to deal with these idols. What is an idol? Anything that you worship more than you worship God. So if, you're, so, so, so if you're so adamant about being on time to your job, and you don't care about what time you get to church, your job is an idol. And here come God. So when you walk in, they're going to say, Pastor Francetta, then it's going to be, be spiritual. Talking about the devil is alive. The devil is alive. But check this out. Here's this pink slip. Yeah. Because God has taken it. That's right. God has taken it away from you because you worship your job more than you worship the creator yeah. of your job. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So, 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 Paul, so, Paul, so, Paul, thank you, woman of God, for being mature. Because see, if I would have made that statement, first, first thing people would say, the devil is alive. That's religious. Yeah. That's, the, that's the stuff he's talking about. Don't you know that any time you worship anything before God, yeah. it's an enemy between you and God? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we finna talk. Let me get going. Let me get going. Let me get going. And so there was a religious idolatry. Paganism is worshiping a false God. Oh, my God. Money, gang banking, drugs, sex, gambling, excuses, complacency, lack of integrity. I'm going to take it off all the other stuff, uh, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. Make it plain, sir. Stuff that we tend to say, that don't matter, but it really do matter. Yeah. The little foxes, the little things. Lord, help me clean up mine. Yeah. Me and the wives just talking to help me clean up mine. It's the little things that we tend to overlook that's small. It's not small in God's eyes, maybe small in your eyes. Yeah. Are you with me so far? Okay, so it was paganism, worshiping false in God. The Galatians were returning to paganism. The Galatians were deceived, church, by an old problem dressed in new clothes. Uh, old problem. Because, see, the Galatians, uh, before Christ came on the set, my God, Galatians, my God, were used to the, 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 the worshiping by way of the law. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of gods in the land. Throughout the Old Testament, my God, everything seemed like it was a God. This was a God. That was a God. That was a God. And so they was accustomed to worshiping other gods. So when Paul shows up and says, there's no other name that a man shall be saved by, my God, but through Jesus Christ, that this time they don't even know what this Jesus Christ is. And so you coming to me, my God, telling me to let go of what I've been, who, my God, affectionately in love with. Oh, you coming to me telling me to let go of something that I've been affectionately in love with. To come serve something that I don't know nothing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the glacier said, we got a problem. Let me say that again. You ask me to let go of something that I have affection to. Because whatever you worship, you love. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Whatever you worship, you admire. Yeah. Whatever you worship, you give allegiance to. Yeah. Whatever you worship, you are loyal to. Whatever you worship, you bow down to. So is it possible that we're coming down here bound down in the natural, bound our knee but not bound our heart to the true and living God? Oh, we preach truth at 205 shall serve. See what I'm trying to say? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so whatever you worship, you admire. Whatever you worship, you adore. Whatever you worship, you in love with. And so they trying to say, you trying to tell me to let go of this, my God, which is not a God, little G, to worship somebody I, ain't, I don't really know nothing about. Uh, we got a problem with that. And so some came and gave their life to Christ. And so therefore, when Paul came and left, here come the enemy. Oh, I'm going so well. Are y'all with me so far? And so, my God, we got to be careful as believers bring it up to our time. Oh, my God, because they're good at telling us this in our former churches. That when you get saved, for a man, put on your slacks, I put on your suit. 
dress it up external. Girl, get out those pants and put on your dress. They want you to dress everything up external. You in church now. You can't dress like that now. You got to make sure you dress the part. But they never told you, especially in the Baptist church, they never told you that God is concerned, that God is concerned about the inside. He said, my God, my God. He said, clean up the inside, and then the outside shall be clean. See, a lot of us, my God, we know, and we come to understand, my God, I can live like I want to live Monday through Saturday as long as I dress it up external, and I look like I'm going hard for Christ. I look like, come on, somebody, but that ain't what God is talking about. See what I'm trying to say? We got to make sure that we allow the inside to affect the outside. So if you clean up the inside of a heart, my God, the outside going to automatically change if you clean up the inside. And so we got to quit dressing it up. We got to quit dressing it up. You come too far to play. You come too far to fake it. It's too much at stake, my God, to be playing with this thing called spirituality, baby. Oh, don't be playing Russian roulette with your soul. Well, my God, my God, quit letting people, my God, quit being so concerned about people's opinion of you and get concerned about God's opinion of you, baby. Oh, my God, my God, quit putting people before God. Are y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Remember what was happening in the Galatia. False teachers had come in after Paul has laid and done the work. Don't you know I can tell you that it's false teachers, teachers that always show up at any type of work? That's something sitting here waiting to come in and try to refute the things that God is saying now. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. Just how it goes. And they'll be exposed. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just make sure that you don't become one if you ain't one. Because you can easily become one real easy. Judaizers was going around behind Paul. This is what they was doing. Teaching that in order for a person to be a Christian, they had to be Jews. In other words, they had to follow all of the rituals. Watch this. To be a Christian, false teaching, that they had to follow all of the rituals and practices of Judaism. The old covenant law. Paul said, what you used to adhere to, what you used to follow, you don't have to follow it no more. Now, keep in mind who we're talking about. We're talking about Apostle Paul, who was a strict Jew. We're talking about somebody that followed the law to the letter. We're talking about somebody that went to the point of even becoming aggressively killing and crucifying Christians. Now he's coming telling these Galatian Christians, the church that he found, the church that he birthed, uh, the way you used to see me get out, you ain't supposed to get out like that. Oh, I got to make sure you can understand. The way you, used to op- way you used to see me operate, you ain't supposed to operate like that. Okay, so that's Paul. Let's bring it up to you and I. So you should get to the point now, Christians. Well, you able to tell people the way you used to see me live, I don't live like that no more. The way I used to operate, I don't do it no more. How I used to get my bread, I don't do it like that no more. How I used to spend my time, I don't do it like that no more. The places I used to go, I don't do it like that no more. The amount of men and women I used to have, I don't do it like that no more. And then you got to be able to have a life to show them how you do it like this now. See, Paul, oh, Lord, I feel like teaching. See, Paul was able to tell them, I don't do that no more, but then he was able to show them why he don't do it no more. See, you got to be able to help somebody come out. See, you can't tell nobody to come out, you ain't got nowhere to take them. This is why I love, oh, my God. This is why I love, my God. This is, this is why I love going over Christ, because we deal with the, now what? You came and gave your life to Christ, now get in discipleship class, let God change you from the inside out. We deal with the now what? A lot of them don't deal with the now what? Just get saved. Oh, we got 10 people saved. What you going to do to keep them saved? I can't get nobody saved right now. That's discipleship, Pastor Melvin. Discipleship keeps you walking with God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all go ahead and have a seat. Let me teach this gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It, it, it. This made sense. Watch me now. Let me teach you. I'm going to stay in context today. This made sense to the Galatians. Why did it make sense? Because it was familiar. This is what they was used to doing, worshiping, you know what I say, from the law and worshiping idols, different gods. So that's why, listen to me, that's why it's so easy for us nowadays to go back to stuff because we're familiar with it. It would be easy for me to go back to game banging. It would be easy for me to go back to selling dope and smoking dope because it's familiar. That's why it's so easy. That's why you got to watch yourself. That's why you got to have boundaries. 
That's why you got to have accountability. That's why you got to have a submitted, committed heart because it's so easy for the flesh man, Minister Elvin, Melvin, to go back to the familiar. It's easy for me and Melvin to say, let's go get it. Pastor, come on, because we've been there, done that. See, this is the danger, my God, of being able to have stuff back there. That's why you got to let go of some friends back there. You got to disconnect from some phone numbers back there. You got to, you might have to move from that side of town to another side. Reposition yourself because it's too easy to go back. (laughs) Oh, my God, you got too much temptation. Many of you are flirting with too much temptation. Oh, my God, you're flirting. Anytime the enemy want to raise the towel, he can because you're too close to the enemy. Some of us are even sleeping with the enemy. Don't realize it. I can't get nobody to say that right there. Oh my God! She said, "You got, you got to, you got to disassociate yourself, my God, from the familiar." And guess what? People, places, and things can be the familiar. Oh my God! You can't be afraid to clip. You can't be afraid, Sheila, to reproduce, reposition yourself. See, it's easy to go back for the Galatians because they were familiar with worshiping idols. It's easier for us to go back to our past because we come to God from our past. The danger of familiarity. Somebody give God a hand. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, you come too far to go back. Man of God, look at your wife. Pleasure, pleasure. Look at Stacy and say, you come too far. Dominique, look at Candy and say, you come too far. Taronda, look at Minister Bell and say, you come too far. Mama, look at your daddy and say, daddy, you come way too far. Come on, look at your sister, woman, the guy right here just beginning and tell you, you come way too far. Way, way. Hey, Patrice, look at Ronnie and say, boy, you know you better not. I can't get nobody to say that right to Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Lawanya, look at Sheila. Lawanya, say, I wish you would. Boy, Jack, I believe you alone. I say, because you know Jackie. <laughs> hey, somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, 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 so you got to begin. Let me teach you some substance. Now, you got to begin to put place in, things in place to guard you against the familiar. Uh, we know the past is there, but what, what safeguards do you have in place to keep you from going back to the past? That's where accountability and all that comes from. Being submitted. Being consistent. Oh, my God. Previously before hearing the gospel of Christ, listen to this, previously before hearing the gospel of Christ, the Galatians observed days, months, seasons, and years related to the Greek gods, little g, and idols. Gods, the gods of fire, earth, and water. Do you realize that people still worship earth, fire? This stuff is applicable today. The Bible was wrote over 3,000, 4,000, almost 4,000 years ago, talking about the gods of fire and earth. Look at society today. They worship that type of stuff right now today. So don't tell me that the Bible is outdated. I'm hearing a lot of pastors, televisionists, pastors talking about so many people are coming against the doctrine of the kingdom, coming against the constitution, talking about the Bible is irrelevant for today. That was a different time. The devil is a lie. I could trace, my God, words that were spoken up under the law to present today. My God, my God, many of us can be, can be tricked, be, be, uh, be, 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 be tricked, be tricked by the enemy because if you don't know your word, Anybody can come to you with a false gospel. And you'll fall for it because you don't know what the words say. See what I say? But when I look in the mirror, when I read the scriptures, I can see stuff manifesting from the old that's happening right now in the new. Uh, uh, they were stubborn. They was rebellious, Old Testament. Well, what are we today? We stubborn and we rebellious. They was in a, uh, the Bible says in the book of Romans, New Testament, my God, they left the natural, natural desire for a woman, I mean a man, and burnt for lust for a woman. They left the natural desire for a, a, a man wanting to be with a woman and burn for another man, homosexuality. Th- that's in the Bible. What's, what we got going today? Uh, the Bible says in Leviticus, don't be wearing man clothes. Women, I can't get nobody. So, 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 so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So don't tell me the Bible's outdated because it's talking about it right now. You got to be a forward thinker when you're dealing with the word. Oh, you can't look at it with my God. You got to make it say, okay, God, how do that word right there apply to me today? Because I promise you, God did not leave out nothing concerning mankind. Oh, my God, I ain't preaching nothing to God. But, oh, man, I never thought about it. I got to go back and rewrite the Bible. I never thought about that. The devil is a lie. If you search the scriptures, you will find truth, baby. Truth would always prevail, baby. It is what it is. I'm going to call it what a T.I. is. Oh, my God, I'm not going to compromise the truth. Oh, my God, to please mankind. 
Not this pastor. I promise you, won't be no compromise in the please man kind. Because I got to stand before God to give an account, mother. My God, for this calling that's on my life, baby. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Many of us, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, guess what? That, that idol, that false God is, watch this, watch this, is the opinion and perception that you want from other people. That's a God. So you will compromise God for the opinion and approval of friends. You will compromise what you know to be truth so you can fit in. Okay, let's put scripture on it. First Corinthians 15, 33. Write that down. Evil communi- company, evil communication corrupt good habits. 1533, 1 Corinthians. So don't you know people can cause you to compromise? People can become your God. People can interfere with progress. People can interfere with your future. People can stop you from growing. People can stop you from possessing. People will disrupt your pattern. People will rob you of peace. People can interfere with healing. People can be a major weapon, baby. You got to be careful. That's why, my God, at different levels, we call different type of, mm, different type of shifting. Everybody can't go, baby. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Mm. And so they was worshiping days, the Galatian months and years, related to the Greek gods and idols, God of the fire, earth, and water. You name it, the Greeks had a god for it, little g. But Paul was not accusing the Galatians of turning back to these idols, though they were turning back to slavery. It's a new kind of slavery. Stay with me. They were trading false teaching for familiarity. See, the false teachers came in behind Apostle Paul when he left. Keyword came in behind. After he planted the seed of truth, here come the enemy to come rob it. <sighs> After the seed of truth was planted, the enemy has come around to rob it. Here's the danger. The people that came around on the backside was people that was always a monster. False teachers was birthed right a monster. They was already there. The truth just exposed them. Truth would expose hypocrisy. Truth would expose false teaching. Truth would expose people's motives. So they come out. They was already there, sitting amongst them, working in the ministry. But everything the pastor or the leaders were saying, they were fruiting it at home in private. They ain't with pastor all the time. False teacher. Always trying to contradict everything somebody say in the house. See, uh oh, let me, let me move, let me move, let me move, let me move. Jewish rituals, Jewish rituals. They were turning back to slavery. A new kind. Of, they were trading the pagan rituals for Jewish rituals. That's another point. They, 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 the, the, the false teachers trying to bring them back to the Jewish way unless you be circumcised, clipped of the foreskin, unless you worship, my God, these gods, you're not a Christian. Paul came and taught them the truth. But when Paul left, these, these Judaizers, which was Jews, my God, they believed in circumcision was the way to be saved. I'm teaching you context. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, the people, it was attractive to the people. You know why? Because they was used to worshiping false gods. So it made it easy for them to lend their ear. Remember I taught y'all, Jesus said, be careful in the New Testament who you lend your ear. Because guess when you lend your ear, your head got to follow. When your head follows, the body's following your head. I can't, you know. See, 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 they, uh, see, see, they was used to hearing and worshiping false gods. And so when, when the false teachers came in, my God, on the backside, come on. Well, I always tell y'all, my, oh my God, when he came on the backside, my God, it was easy for the, for, the, for, the, for the Galatians to go back to slavery. And the false teachers were trying to get them back in bondage, watch this, to the very thing that Paul had liberated them from. Yeah, yeah. So when you start lending your ear, let me bring it up, to the familiar, all the enemy is trying to do is to get you and I back into bondage to the things that you've already been set free from. So when you start dabbing, when you start crossing the boundary, when you get too close to the fire, see, enemy is pulling. When you get in a body like this, or whatever church you go to if you're not a member here, and you get around somebody that's contaminated, somebody that's wounded, somebody don't have the best interest of the ministry in hand because they're jealous because you sit here and she sit, I can't get nobody to say that. I'm just using that example. So, you know, when, when, you, when, when people start sabotaging uh, uh, the next level of worship, uh, uh, why is they jumping around like that? Why is they doing all that? You know, we, we supposed to be dignified. Why are they acting like animals? See, people, there's many ways to worship and to begin to destroy work. 
through the people that's sitting in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, this is heavy yeah. teaching about her. See what I'm trying to say? So you got to be careful, my God, that you don't use your instruments. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable and pleasing unto the Lord. You got to make sure, I got to make sure that we don't present our instruments unto unrighteousness. Yeah. Yeah. You could be presenting your instruments using your gift, time, and talent, my God, to serve the enemy and not serve God. Yeah. And don't even realize you're doing it because it's covered up in new clothes and a whole lot of spirituality that's yeah. fake. Yeah. Clean the church, God, for the move. Thank you, Lord. So it's a new kind of slavery. Uh, they was trying to go back. My God. It, it, was, it was perceived. Watch the enemy so cunning and crafty. He, he tried to present, my God, something that was familiar in a new and improved version of what they already know. Come on. Pass. Come on, Dre. Future, unknown, familiar, familiar, been there, done this, seen that. Faith, trust, commitment over her. See what I say? Okay, watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's giving it to me as I God delivered. My God. And so they uh, knew and proved. So here come the enemy. You've been away from him for six months. Our time. Here I come. Oh, well, I'm not going to use that. I ain't going to mess with you. Here go the enemy telling you that 10,000 take from here to Oklahoma City. The check waiting on you. Not knowing that this person, because you've been away from this, in the church supposed to be, trying to do something different supposed to be. This your homeboy you grow up with though, but he a uh, 10,000. Remember, I'm talking about new and improved. But y'all don't know, and we don't know, because we don't know what he's been doing since we've been in the church house. But we didn't fell on some hard times, and we can always go back and get that quick blast. I come on, somebody, that quick cheese, that quick whack. I can't get, I'm making it plain because I got people, my God, that can't get her that's listening. I know what I'm doing. Come on, I communicate with people outside the church. I'm speaking their language. I'm not speaking your language. See what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, uh, 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 whoo, shanda, bo, she, kid, alaba, shanda. Mm. And so he told you 10000 he can set you right. This will pay all your bills and you'll be good. But what he didn't tell you is that he'd been busted and they're using him as an informant. As soon as, soon as you get to Oklahoma City, as soon as you cross city lines, 405 area code, here come the highway patrol because he was waiting on you before you got there. But they promised you new and improved. Go ahead, sit down. Now, now, thank you, Holy Ghost. You can stay there, Andre. I'm moving. But instead of us Christians, let me bring it up now to some of y'all seeds that people ain't never done with that. Some of y'all self-righteous people that ain't got no fame, ain't never been through nothing. But some of us that's been through something, yeah, yeah. Some of us that got some blood on our hand. <laughs> somebody that popped them things. Somebody, come on, so I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mike, I'm going to talk to them people today. I don't want to talk to those self-righteous people. I want to talk to some real alpha males, some real alpha females in this place today. That been, has anybody ever been through something? Has anybody ever experienced something? You ain't been holy and righteous all your life? Quit sitting down on God. Somebody give God some glory in this church, man. All the holy and righteous stuff. Oh my God, oh my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. And so you're in purpose over here in the future. See, over there it was easier for me to take that pop, that new and improve. She was trying to say, because this here, I got the trust, I got the weight, I got to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. I got to show up. I got to watch people get blessed and my time ain't came yet. I got to work and shovel sheep dung until my promotion come. See, it requires something to be on this side. Oh, my God, but guess what? I ain't got to worry about doing life. I ain't got to worry about getting shot down. I ain't got to worry about the world hurt me no more. I ain't got to worry about people robbing me no more, cutting my face up, shooting me all up. See, I ain't got to worry about all that. So I just stay right here and just keep shoving sheep down. I just keep trusting God with my future. I'm just going to trust God because it's good on this side. I might not have everything, but I got good things. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Right there. It's all good on this side. 
Oh my God. So, 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 okay, okay, after all that, what am I saying? Quit letting the new improved lie entice you to leave that and go. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking to myself. It'd be so easy to kick in for me to just, because <laughs> I, 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 I got them out there putting it, putting it down. It's easy, I promise y'all, it's easy for me to get it right back cracking. And one, as soon as I preach, I go right out north and get it cracking all over again. Just like that. And I've been away from it for 25 years. Completely set free. It's that easy to go back. It's that easy to return. It's that easy to quit. It's that easy to give up. It's that easy to get discouraged. You got to learn to encourage yourself when ain't nobody else around to encourage you. You got to quit going back. You didn't come too far to go back. You didn't come too far. I'm sorry for my passion. I'm sorry for my passion. Oh my God, I know some of y'all. Amen. Amen. This gonna bless you. So, 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 don't let the enemy continue to present new and improve. Because the new and improve, something that starts out good on the front end, I teach my daughter this. Something that's good on the front, it may sound good. I'm talking about Billy D. Williams, everything. Something that's good on the front end can come back and kill you or curse you on the back end. That's why the Bible says, Scripture, Minister Tawanda, try spirit by the spirit. So if you're not spiritually alive, you accept something because it look good. Some of us is choosing the new improved. Because see, now he's sitting in church with new clothes on. And he's talking a little bit of scripture because he's trying to entice you. He's trying to entice you to get your earth so you can say, so you can reconsider. But ain't nothing changed. <laughs> ain't nothing changed. <laughs> he's still the same. Oh, she's still the same. Well, ain't nothing changed. <laughs> she still don't honor you. She still don't respect you. Ain't nothing changed. Baby, it's going to be different this time. Yeah, it is with somebody else, but it won't be with me. <laughs> I can't you know that. Ain't nothing changed. I'm going to bring it in. Now, now, as I look, see what y'all don't know? See, I got to bring context. My spiritual father who's probably watching taught me this. Now, y'all seen my daughter come out here. Uh, that spoke to her because she's faced with those opportunities every day, like many of you. And so before I go back, before I give myself over to something that promised me happiness but really going to hurt me, I'd rather be by myself. I'm, I come too far. I said, I come too far. I said, I come too far. Solomon, I come too far. Brad, Brad, I come too far, homie. I can't go back. I refuse to go back. Hey, hey. I don't care what happened, baby. I ain't going back. I ain't going back, baby. Double R, oh man, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Close it, baby. Hey. Hey. Oh my God, we come too far. Oh, we come too far. Oh, we come too far. Yeah, no, 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 no. We come too far. Oh, we come too far to go back. To whom shall I go? God, you got the words of eternal life. I can't go back to the slavery. I refuse to go back to the bondage. Oh my God, see, because God just gave this to me. And I'm going to find out something. And if you don't want to follow me in the spirit, that's okay. But I want everybody that's on this side. Oh my God, get up and shift to your future. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Shift. Everybody come on this side right here. Oh, take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. Move over. 
move over disassociate yourself from your past disassociate yourself from your familiar thank you Holy Ghost disassociate yourself from the familiar disassociate yourself from that which you know oh my God pack it in over her pack it in over her get it over as many as you can oh my God if you want to get away from your past shift I know some of y'all may think this is crazy but that's okay you got to lose your mind to do stuff for God God goes counter to it to the natural mind God don't work from the natural mind he worked from the spiritual mind this is where you trust God we shift in this church pack them on in there pack them on in there my God this is your future you're standing in your purpose you're standing in your destiny you're standing in your healing you're standing in your deliverance God is restoring marriages God is re returning sons back to fathers and daughters back to mama you're standing in it my God come on somebody come on don't look at me come on you're standing in your future